I've lived and worked from my RV full time for four years and finding stable internet has been a real journey for me. I've tried it all and failed a lot. But finally, I can tell you that I found a solution that gives me almost the same kind of internet service that I had in a house, but with a much better view. Happy Sunday, everybody. It's Robin with Creativity RV, and I know that a lot of you have been waiting for this video. Today, I am psyched that I can finally tell you about an internet service that works for me. Like I said, I've tried it all, and almost everything I tried didn't work for me in one way or another, including a super pricey option that I tried that was an epic failure. But that led me to the service that I use now, which I love, 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 and I'm gonna tell you all about it and how much it costs, but not everybody needs the same kind of service that I need. I use a lot of data, and for the people that just wanna get on the road and have some other options, I'm going to go over the three basic ways that you can get internet while you're mobile and on the road. If you wanna skip past that and go right to what I'm using, just fast forward to this time right here, and you can bypass all of that basic information. On the road, finding a signal can be difficult, the data is expensive and the options are constantly changing. But here's the good news. Since I've been on the road, really everything has improved. The big major cellular carriers are putting up tons of new cell towers. And as you might know, there's a race to get up 5G rural internet through satellites. So I've got my eye on that. And if anything changes or I find anything better than what I'm going to talk about today, I'll be the first to let you know. But for now, there are three basic ways that you can get service on the road. Local Wi-Fi hotspots, cell service through your phone and a hotspot, and a data-only router. The first way to get internet is through a local Wi-Fi hotspot. You can usually find these in populated areas at like a McDonald's or a laundromat or a library or a local visitor center. The problem with these is that you actually have to be in a populated area to find one. It's not like if you're in the woods like me, you can sign on to local Wi-Fi. But here's how they work. They're generally free. Think about if you go into a McDonald's on your smartphone, you go into your settings and you find the Wi-Fi that McDonald's offers and you sign in. It's not fast and it's not the safest option because you don't have a VPN and it's a public network. But for people that just need a little bit of connectivity while they go into town and get services, this is not a bad option and it's free. The next option is to get your service through your cell phone and a mobile hotspot and a lot of nomads use this and it works for some people but not for people that use a lot of data and I'll explain. We all know that there are three big vendors that sell cell phone service that comes with internet. They're Verizon, T-Mobile and AT&T and they have towers all over the country. More are popping up. You can usually find them near populated areas or near highways. And I'll tell you that after you've been on the road a year, you take pride in being able to spot all the cell towers that I never even noticed were out there before I was a nomad. But just because you see one of those towers doesn't mean you'll have a signal because those towers are owned or leased by those individual carriers. So if you have your phone service through Verizon and that's an AT&T tower, it won't work. This is why some mobile people actually buy service from more than one carrier, two or three, which can get expensive, but then they know if they're near any tower, they're going to get a signal. Another important thing to know about getting your service through a cell tower is that there has to be line of sight to get that connection. So a big rock or a tree will block that signal. There are some cool ways around that that I'll discuss in an upcoming video, but for now, let's talk about unlimited service and what that really means. A lot of us have unlimited service on our cell phone plan, but it usually doesn't mean what you think it does. That gives you unlimited calls and data on your cell phone. So, if you want to do all your emails, stream your Netflix, even do a Zoom meeting, on your phone, have at it, you know, gobble up those gigabytes because that is truly unlimited. 
The problem comes in two ways. First of all, even though they say unlimited, if you use a lot of data, you will be throttled, which means they intentionally slow down your service. If you're in an area that's more congested, you've used a lot, so they let the faster service go to other people first. A lot of the vendors that offer the unlimited plans do let you tether your other devices into your phone plan, but they are depressingly limited in how many gigabytes they offer. Most companies offer 10 to 15 gigabytes. So you can connect your laptop to your phone and maybe send a couple of emails or a document. But if you're like me, I was eating up that little bit of data in two or three days, and it is completely cost prohibitive to get more. That brings us to the next solution, which is a data only mobile router. Here's an example of a mobile router. They're just tiny little boxes that give you data service only. So there's no phone service coming through here like there is inside of a cell phone. Those same towers come down into this device through a SIM card that's put inside of here. And then this gives you a hotspot for your own little house with a password that you can connect everything to. You can buy all kinds of different mobile routers on your own or through a service provider like Verizon or AT&T, like a Jetpack or a MoFi or a MiFi or a Nighthawk. You can buy it on your own or with a subscription. But know this, if you get one through your cell phone vendor, like let's say you have Verizon for your cell phone and you get a Jetpack, they put the gigabytes that they allow inside of that hotspot into your regular plan. So if they are throttling you after you hit like 20 gigabytes, even though they say they're unlimited on the phone, that means that your hotspot and your phone are going to be slowed down to a snail's speed. I heard like everybody else that there were these unlimited grandfathered plans like through AT&T or sometimes through Cricket. You hear about them. It's like a rumor that swirls around and they say that you can buy them and they can be transferred and the service is unlimited and people can pay ungodly amounts for them like on eBay only to find out that the carrier has caught this happening and they get turned off. Okay, now let me tell you about the Odyssey that has been my journey to try and find mobile internet on the road. As you might know, besides having this channel, I also have creativityrv.com, the website. I also run another website and I have four books, two of which are super research intensive and I'm constantly at my desk online doing research, uploading, downloading, and emailing. When I first got on the road, all I had was an unlimited plan on a cell phone. I was constantly checking my data usage because I had overages that were really expensive. And so to get around it, I didn't stream anything and I would work offline on my computer and then plug my phone into the computer, transfer files, upload them from the phone, vice versa, and it was a nightmare that took a ton of my time and was not working for me. Then I tried Visible on this phone, which I still have, by the way. If you're not familiar with Visible, they offer unlimited data only through a smartphone for $40 a month. Now, I haven't gotten rid of this plan because I think it's a good backup for me, just in case. It used to be that your speed could be slowed down, but recently I read that Visible stopped doing that. So this might be an okay option for some people. And I did use it for a while, but let me tell you why, as a working nomad, Visible was not the best option for me. You have to go in, turn on the Wi-Fi, turn on the hotspot, connect all your devices, and then when you turn it off, everything is disconnected and you have to go back and do it again. The speeds on this were not fast enough for me to stream anything, but, it did give me more data, so if I wanted to upload a video, I could do it. But on my visible plan, it was not uncommon for that to take 12 hours, up to 21 hours for me to upload a video. I also tried to get a mobile router through my cell phone provider. That was a couple of hundred bucks and then an extra 40 bucks a month on my plan. It only gave me, I think, 20 gigabytes um, to use my router as a hotspot, and I was being throttled and it wasn't really giving me very fast speed. Now I could go in and buy more, but it was completely cost prohibitive. I think it was 40 bucks for four extra gigabytes and I use hundreds of gigabytes, so you do the math. Then last summer, 
When Doug was finishing up his corporate job and moving out of his apartment, we had to stay in an RV park for a couple of months and my cell phone service was not getting it done and the Wi-Fi in that park was non-existent. Doug had to be on conference calls on Zoom all day long and our connection was not good enough for that to happen. We had to find an alternative. So we contacted a local internet provider that actually installed a tower on our site in the RV park that looks kind of like this one for $170 a month it was constantly going down. It was also dependent on line of sight, which was a little bit tricky. And if there was any kind of bad weather, we lost our signal completely. I know what a lot of you have been waiting for. Last year, I did a video interview with a couple that traveled in a class B. During the interview, I saw that they had the most rad internet setup I had ever seen. Now, both of these people were tech people. They actually ran a tech support company and one of them did this kind of support work for the military. So it was way above my pay grade, but they explained it to me and I thought that I could do it. What they had was a Max BR1 Pepwave router. That looks like this. And I told you guys I was gonna buy one and test it out. And a lot of you asked me how it was working because you too are desperate for a solution. And I am sorry to tell you this was a pricey failure in my quest to find the right service for me. Here's what happened. I bought this router for 300 bucks and then I had to spend about another hundred dollars on components. And you'll see here that it actually has two SIM card slots. Here's an old uh, T-Mobile still in there. Don't use it. And here is, I think, a Verizon, okay? So one of the reasons I liked this is that they had it mounted and these two little cards go in here and the device actually chooses which one has a better signal and then routes it to all of your devices. This was the problem for me. I had this installed, but it did not come with the data card. So I was constantly buying data cards, like one from AT&T. I did Verizon, I did AT&T, I did T-Mobile, I did Cricket, I did Mint Mobile. And I was spending about $100 a month in addition to the cost of the router for SIM cards to go in here. But it's not like I put the SIM card in and it would work for anybody that wants to do this. I had to actually, every time, plug an Ethernet cable. I was like, Ethernet cable? 1995 is calling. Where's my box that has all my weird cables? Luckily, I actually had one. But I had to plug that in from here to my laptop. And I had to have a signal on my laptop to get this to connect to a dashboard where I had to set up the card. But it kind of defeats the purpose if you're trying to get internet in the middle of nowhere. But I would connect it, go into the dashboard, it would read the SIM card, then it would contact the company to make sure the service was valid. And I have to say, about 30% of the time it worked. The companies didn't like this router. And I would call them and most of the minions on the phone didn't know what a pep wave max router was and if i called the company i bought the router through they didn't sell me the sim cards now angie and jenna the ladies from the video helped me over the phone to set up this system like three times but it was just becoming a hassle because i was buying these sim cards that had maybe 20 gigs of data Either they wouldn't work or they would work and run out and I'd have to go through the whole process again. I know that the pep wave is great for a lot of people out there. It just did not work for me. It was too complicated, not turnkey, and I had to have a signal to set it up. Now I get it. For some nomads, this is no big deal because they just want to go out in nature and read a book. But for some of us, that is not an option. And I really was at my wits end and then I found the service I use now, which is Nomad Internet. Nomad Internet's tagline is that they offer truly unlimited high-speed internet for people that travel, and that sounded good, but at this point, you can imagine that I was skeptical, so I really wanted to try it out, and I have, and I'm here to tell you, it works. I've been using this service for nine months since last September. It's been a complete game changer for me. I've had no issues. I don't have to change out a SIM card. There's no turning on and turning off 
Wi-Fi hotspots, it just works. And we've traveled through five states with both of us working full time. I think we have six devices in here that have been connected to our Nomad Internet service and it has worked like a champ. Nomad Internet has been gracious enough to give our viewers a $25 off coupon that you can use towards your membership. So if you go check it out and you want to try it, when you go into your cart, just put the code CRV25 in as the coupon code and you'll see 25 bucks come off. So let me explain how the Nomad Internet service works. They partner with all three of the big cellular carriers, AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon, to offer the unlimited data-only service through a router. I'll put their link below. When you go onto their website, you're gonna see that you have to choose which plan is right for you, either the AT&T, the T-Mobile, or the Verizon. I chose the one that's right for me. I have one vendor on my cell phone, so I chose a different one for my router. So now, just in case, I have two different carriers. I will tell you, different plans sell out on their website, but they're usually back up with all of them in just a few days. Right now, I saw that they have T-Mobile and AT&T, but in two weeks when you guys see this video, all of them might be there or this might be changed. So just go over and look for yourself. Now, the speeds will change based on where you go and how close you are to the tower, but I can tell you for us, we're in the middle of nowhere in a forest right now, and we have a screaming signal. The same was true in the middle of the desert. We really have not had a problem finding a signal. Now, I will tell you that we know how to search for a campsite that has coverage for our carriers. I'm going to show you guys how we do that in an upcoming travel series, so subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the little bell for notifications because I'm going to walk you through how I found this spot in the middle of the forest that has four or five bars of service with both of my carriers. And here's the best part. We never even check our usage. I don't even think about it. I don't have to restrict how I use my data anymore. No more downloading my shows from Netflix and watching them offline later. No listening to podcasts for the news instead of watching it if that's what I want to do. Doug is able to connect with his friends and play a video game online like they were still in the same room. And I'll tell you this, the signal that he gets to play that game is faster than it was in his apartment. Now I'm sure you're wondering how much this costs and if there's a contract. There is no contract. You only pay for the service month to month as you go along, but there is a membership fee that you pay one time when you get set up. There's a variety of plans with Nomad Internet. So the membership fee and the monthly cost changes based on which one you choose but the range for the membership fee, I think is about 149 to 200 one time. And then the monthly cost is about 129 to 189, I think. I'll be honest, when I first looked at this service, the first thing that I was worried about was the membership fee. I just couldn't wrap my head around why I would pay that when I could just buy my own router. Well, I'll tell you why. Because you're constantly on the hunt for a SIM card with enough data. And an unlimited data SIM card is like, a unicorn. You can find them, but it's tough. And if the router breaks or it's above my pay grade to use it, like my Bax BR1 was, I'm just out that money. With a membership at Nomad Internet, if your router breaks, they'll actually swap it out. My second biggest concern with this service was choosing the carrier. I mean, let's say I chose T-Mobile and AT&T was better, or AT&T was better than Verizon, and I get the router and I start camping and I realize that that was not the right choice. It's no big deal because with that membership fee, they just go ahead and transfer the service to a different router. They take the money that you paid for the membership fee and put it towards another plan. The other thing that made me feel better about trying Nomad Internet is they have a seven day money back guarantee. So if I got the service and it didn't work out and I didn't really wanna swap it for another plan, I could just return it and get refunded my membership costs and the cost of the plan if I did it within the first seven days. If you need truly unlimited high-speed internet on the road, I say give it a try. It has been a complete game changer for me. They're giving us $25 off if you use the code CRV25 at checkout 
and they have a great team that will help you decide what plan is best for you. If finding a way to get affordable, unlimited internet on the road has been the obstacle that's stopping you from living your dreams, I hope this video has helped you. I'll see you guys next Sunday. Until then, everybody have happy travels and be free.